Hi, this is E.T. in sunny northwest Florida, actually cloudy northwest Florida, and it's story time. This time about the single time an amateur with no professional experience for his first fight challenges for the heavyweight championship of the world. The date, 1957, the contestants, the newly crowned champion, Floyd Patterson, who had just beaten Archie Moore, light heavyweight champion, after Rocky Marciano gave up the title, versus the 1956 amateur champion at the Olympic Games in Melbourne, Australia, Pete Rademacher. Now let's take a look at Pete. Born 1928 in Washington State. So you can tell he's pretty old to be entering the professional world of boxing in 1957. He's at a time when many fighters retire. At an early age, he developed rheumatic fever. My guess is that that came following a bout of strep throat before antibiotics, penicillin, were mass produced. So he used boxing as an exercise to get his body back into condition. And not only did that work, he found out he had a talent for winning. So this person, Pete Rademacher, would fight all the way through the amateur ranks, including against a former professional, Zora Foley. And um, he will go through all the top contenders at the Melbourne Olympics winning by knockout, including one over a knockout artist himself, a Russian. Rademacher put him out. I think the Russian had something like a hundred straight <coughs> KO victories. More than being a boxer, Pete Rademacher was a businessman, and as a businessman, his forte was sales. And he was able to sell even Custom Auto, the manager of Floyd Patterson, on the wisdom of his guy, Floyd Patterson, fighting an amateur champion in that amateur champion's first pro bout. But Custom Auto said, Pete, you got to come up with the money. Pete Rademacher found the investors. They held the bout in Seattle, Sixth Stadium. And um, they, they sold it out, thanks mainly to Pete Rademacher. He was able to convince just about everyone that not only did he have a chance to survive, but maybe win the championship from Floyd Patterson. Now, the odds makers knew better. They refused to even make bets on this fight. Well, here's what happened. The referee, by the way, is Tommy Loughran. Tommy Loughran is considered by Ring Magazine's Nat Fleischer to be the fourth best light heavyweight in history. He, Lochran, had fought for the heavyweight championship and, to my estimation, won it when he fought Primo Carnera. But as Lochran told the story, the mob made it clear, if you want a chance at Dare Prime, then you have to understand you're going to lose the fight. Unless you can knock Canera out, which is highly unlikely considering Primera was a, a giant for those days and uh, Lochran was a light heavyweight. Anyway, Lochran's refereeing the bite. One more thing about Lochran, he went on to become a Wall Street commodities trader and did very well. Okay, now the bout starts this way. <clears throat> And both the champion, Floyd Patterson, and the challenger, P. Rademacher, are surprised that Rademacher is able to rough Patterson up in the first round. That round went to Rademacher. And in round two, Rademacher put the champion down for a short time. He was up at about the count of three. But after that, it was all downhill for Pete Rademacher. Patterson was too fast. He had figured out Rademacher's style. 
And with that peekaboo stance of his, he was able to land a whole bunch of punches. And Rademacher would go down six times, maybe five. It depends on who you read. And many of the sports writers said, yeah, he was down six times. But Lochran ruled one of those to be a slip. Whatever. It was a KO loss at the end of round six. Now, Rademacher had planned to win, or if he did win, he would plan to retire, but he did not win. So he goes on to fight his old nemesis, now top-ranked contender, Zora Foley. But in Rademacher's second fight against Foley, he, Rademacher, will be knocked out again. He continues on. He fights a string of mediocre fighters until he meets uh, uh, Uli, Uli uh, uh, Nitschke in Germany. Uh, Nitschke would fight top heavyweights, and uh, Rademacher wins that bout. Then he runs into Brian London. Brian London was one of those fighters, very rare, who fought all the top contenders. Uh, I think it, four men who became champions. Uh, and London will, uh, will knock out Rademacher. Then it's a few more fights, one of which takes place in a Washington state city in eastern Washington called Spokane. And I'm assuming Rademacher picked that because he was a, a graduate of Washington State College, now Washington State University, which is near Spokane. <clears throat> E.T. knows the brother of Kirk Barrow, who was Rademacher's opponent in Spokane. And uh, although E.T. is a fan of P. Rademacher at the time, he also was a fan of the Spokane fighter. Uh, Kirk Barrow. I, I did a video on Kirk, uh, one of the greatest fighters you never heard of. He would have been light heavyweight champion in E.T.'s estimation. I'm going to put the video uh, link at the end of this video. You'll see it pop up if you want to watch that one. Anyway, I, 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 the, uh, the fight turned out this way. It was a split decision for Rademacher. Almost everybody agrees that it should have been a draw. Ichi saw Pete Rademacher train, and he, I remember very well. It was all gristle, muscle, and bone. Uh, how anybody could stay long in the ring with him, I don't know. But Kirk Barrow did. Rademacher will win a few more, then he'll run into Doug Jones and two other, uh, let's see, Carl Mildenberger, and it's all going to be downhill. His last fight will be with uh, heavyweight. Uh, contender Bobo Olsen, and um, Rademacher will win that by decision. <coughs> the story doesn't end there. And Rademacher, I told you before, was a businessman. I think his heart was in business all the way. He's alive, by the way. He lives in a uh, town just south of uh, Wenatchee, Washington, Grand View. And uh, it's a nice place if you want to go visit. It's very pretty. Grandview, Washington. He would join forces with another Olympic champion from the 1936 Olympics named uh, Adolf Kiefer. Uh, Kiefer held several records, in particular in the, uh, the backstroke. And eventually, thanks to his salesmanship, and good managerial skills, Pete Rademacher will be president of the Kiefer McNeil branch of the McNeil Corporation. This is a pretty big deal. A Rademacher will be an expert, show himself as an expert in many areas um, in sports. He'll be an inventor. Uh, he'll, he'll do very well uh, in life. And uh, that's pretty much the, the end of the story. Floyd Patterson will go on to fight several more times. He'll lose the title to Ingemar Johansson and uh, then get it back and then beat Johansson again later on. I did a video on that. I'll put it up there, too. And uh, then uh, Pat Patterson will run into Sonny Liston, and you can pretty well guess how that turned out. 
And that's the end of the story, boys and girls. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give a thumbs up. If you did not, thumbs down. I'd prefer it be a thumbs up. And uh, do promote this video, if you, these videos, if you can. That'll prompt me to put more up. Thanks for watching. This is E.T. Bye.